Good morning, today we're going to talk about uh, mortar in stone. We are at the Commissariat store in Brisbane, which is a penal colony uh, settled, uh, storage uh, facility that they had made to store things like food and uh, supplies and guns and things. So they defended it with iron bars across all the windows so that the convicts uh, couldn't exactly break in and steal everything and become free and things like that. But I would like to show you this wall because it's one of the oldest walls in Brisbane and they've made the mortar and you might see these white specks in between uh, the bricks and that is because they have been uh, made out of crushed bits of seashell which they got from Strad Stradbroke Island. I had to double check that with my reference. Um, so my thought was why did they use crushed up bits of seashell? Why would you put that in mortar exactly? Well, turns out it's a bit of chemistry. To make mortar you would make a sort of like a cement mixture and cement when it dries it hardens and uh, I think cement, uh, it's, it's stronger if you have these little bits of particles inside of it uh, to give it some um, strength uh, and they call this an aggregate and this could be things like sand, gravel, stones, whatever you can find, crush it up or a, a rocky substance and then you fill it as a, it's basically filling for the cement mixture. The main part of the cement mixture which makes it go hard and set is lime. Lime comes from limestone and when we were in France we found an entire shoreline which was covered with limestone and chalk and it turns out if you take some of that stuff and you cook it in an oven at about 800 something degrees Celsius, if you cook it long enough, it'll actually decompose the limestone, calcium carbonate, in, into a smaller parts, which will be calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. The cal calcium oxide is the lime. And when you mix that with water, you get calcium hydroxide. And so uh, I think it's a, a white slurry mixture. And if you let the water reduce, like evaporate and dry, then once, it's, once the, uh, the, the solid is able to get in contact with the surface of the air, it'll actually absorb carbon dioxide back into itself again and form a crystal lattice. And when it forms a crystal lattice, if you've got things like aggregate, like stone and gravel and um, sand, then it'll trap those bits of sand into it and very, form a very strong piece of uh, composite material. Why would they use seashells though? Seashells turns out to be made out of the similar stuff as chalk and limestone. They are made out of calcium carbonate. So when you crush it down, you can put it in an oven, cook it, decompose it into calcium oxide to create your lime and therefore you do the process all over again. Um, I think they might have left some of the, uh, uh, the more coarser parts of the seashell as to uh, play a part as the aggregate as well as possibly sand. So I'll show you some macro shots of it in a moment.